Maranatha, everyone. This is Pastor Jed, and this is another edition of my weekly video blog, Apologetics and Prophecy, where we like to take current events, put them through an apologetical and biblical lens to see just how close we are to the return of our Lord. And this week, um, we have been at our church, Calvary Solid Ground, going through the book of Revelation, and we're now in chapter 18, which comes to the end of the judgment of the future city of Babylon. Well, the city of Babylon that will be judged at the end of the tribulation period. And as um, this judgment of the materialism of that's centered in Babylon that has been part of the world system even today, uh, we read at the end of the chapter in verse 23, and your merchants were the great men of the earth, for by your sorcery all the nations were deceived. And so we have to ask ourselves, what's the sorcery mean? Are there sorcerers today? Is what What is the purpose and meaning of this statement? And what does uh, John, when he was seeing this vision and writing this, mean? Well, we know that sorcery is mentioned in Galatians chapter 5 as a work of the flesh, and those that practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. The Greek word is the word pharmakia. It's really where we get our English word pharmacy, and it is our word where we get our word for drugs. And we know in the past uh, that that pharmakia or pharmacy or drugs were always associated with spirituality. Uh, just by way of reminder, I shared this story in January on a prophecy update, but um, archaeologists identify traces of burnt cannabis in, ancient Jewish, on, in an ancient Jewish shrine. New research suggests the mind-altering substance may have been widely used in the ritual practices of the kingdom of Judah. Roughly 35 miles south of Jerusalem in an archaeological site in the Negev desert known as Tel Arad, archaeologists excavating an ancient Jewish shrine have found traces of burnt cannabis and frankincense on a pair of limestone altars, reports Christian Rogers of CNN. The new research, published last week in the journal Tel Aviv, provides the first evidence that the mind-altering substance was part of religious life in the ancient kingdom of Judah. Tel Arad contains the remains of a Canaanite city from the 3rd millennium BC, as well as an Israelite fortress from between 10th, the 10th and 6th century BC, right before the um, exile of the Jews in Judah to Babylon. Now that gives us uh, a whole new perception when we read many verses that speak of why God judged the nation of Judah and Israel. In Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 16, God said through the prophet, I will utter my judgments against them concerning all their wickedness because they have forsaken me, burned incense to other gods, and worshiped the works of their own hands. So this burning incense was surrounded not only by just a, a, a offering to God, but also with drug use. The sorcery was being practiced by the ancient Israelites even at that time. But we know if you follow through history, I mean, my life consisted of one being delivered from drugs and alcohol. My parents were hippies in the 60s and I grew up in that culture. And of course, we know that all through it, it was surrounded by occultism and, you know, all these dark practices that now as a Christian, I can look back and see are evil and demonic. I mean, how many people ever saw a Bible for sale at a head shop? I mean, you look at some of these pictures of head shops, you see black light posters and they would sell incense. And so we know that even their book part, the, the bookshelf that they would sell there all deal with a cult and Eastern mysticism and all these things that we know are connected to demonic worship. And so it shouldn't surprise us that living in the last days that we would see these things begin to happen. Uh, magic mushrooms will be legal in Oregon next year. Only one fast-growing species is likely to make the cut. Oregon is on track to become the first U.S. state to roll out legal psilocybin, the psychoactive substance found in magic mushrooms. 
Officials are now tentatively planning to green light one particular species of magic mushrooms for therapeutic use in the state starting in 2023. Lab-made psilocybin alongside therapy has shown promise in clinical trials for the treatment of severe depression. So we already see them starting to use this sorcery, uh, just like God said that you had forsaken me and burned incense to other gods. Now we see this happening in reality. Instead of helping people by pointing them to Christ, we're pointing them to this um, to the sorcerer's stone, so to speak, to the way of sorcery and to the demonic realm to try to help people. And so we, but, you know, it, look, at, it's been even taken to a next level. We know uh, the World Economic Forum just had their annual meeting at Davos where they're planning, you know, they're conspiring to take over the world and make, create a one world government. We have here the first ever medical psychedelic series at Davos 2022. As the COVID-19 pandemic laid bare, mental health is one of the largest un undeserved, underserved areas in the medical community. With few solutions in sight, there is a growing body of evidence that suggests that Psychedelic assisted therapy could provide a breakthrough in treating countless mental health ailments such as depression, substance abuse disorders, and PTSD. Um, as world leaders come together to discuss the global economy at the World Economic Forum's annual gathering, the world's most prominent psychedelic industry leaders. Now, did you know that there was psychedelic industry leaders? Drug development experts, clinicians, nonprofit organizations, advocates, and influencers will gather separately at Davos at the inaugural medical psychedelic series to help shape the future of mental health. This is a one-of-a-kind opportunity for medical psychedelics ecosystem to share the breakthroughs in psychedelic therapeutics for the first time with world leaders. That's right. I mean, I used to use those things to escape the things that they're trying to deliver these people from. There's, you know, this was the thing that we used to escape reality and put them in an artificial reality and then say that's okay. Now they're healed, but it's not. It is actually making them worse than they were because now they're using doctrines of demons and demonic influences to help try to cure people of things that can really be cured if they came to Christ if they found the one true and the one hope in him. So, um, so we see the world turning to sorcery instead of Christ. It's obvious that we see this, but what about, you know, regular, uh, the regular pharmaceutical industry? You know, the, the kind that the doctors prescribe to you, the kind that people go when they have depression or they say they have a medical imbalance and they need these drugs to help them. Uh, are these people, they're not, they, 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 you can't connect these people with witchcraft or demonic forces, can you? Well, if I think you can when you see headlines like this, this week, Pfizer, BioNTech, COVID-19 vaccine demonstrates strong immune response, high efficacy and favorable safety in children six months to five years of age following the third dose. We know that this disease that they are trying to help has really none effect on young children from six to five months old but yet they want to force this thing on them saying that it is good for them. It's because they, they want them hooked on their system. They want them hooked on their drugs. They know that it will lead to a lifetime of dependence on the things that they create. That's what the pharmaceutical industry does. They don't want you healthy. They want you hooked so that you have to continue to take them. Now, I know there's definite needs out there, and there are definitely some positive things that, you know, drugs that we have developed for people, but for the most part, they're overprescribed and they're overused and they are dependent upon by many people when they, if they just came to Christ, that would be their answer.
Well, we know that Big Pharma is what really controls a lot of our government decisions. Big Pharma is still lobbying, uh, uh, still the largest lobbying spender as Biden signs crackdown executive order. House seeks to pass bill lowering drug prices. Pharmaceutical Research and Manufacturers of America, a trade organization that spent roughly $8.6 million on lobbying in the first quarter of 2022, sued to block the policy proposals to lower lower-priced prescription drugs. Canada has also hinted they will oppose large-scale exports. The pharmaceuticals and health products industry spent about $92 million on lobbying in the first quarter of the year, 2021, more than any other industry. You know, that's what do you think is driving the vaccine push? What do you think is driving the need for their particular um, therapeutics to help in these viruses that are going around? Do you really think that it's all about your health? No, it's about money. It's about their money. And we know that if you watched my prophecy update last week, that money is a root of all evil. And so, um, but then why do you think we're outspoken and revealing the truth about the World Health Organization's recent failure to try to get our country and 192 other ones to follow in line to their leadership of our medical community? It says, uh, strate- uh, global health talks clouded by conspiracy theories about pandemic, uh, about pandemic treaty. Uh, Global health leaders gathered in Geneva on Sunday to discuss the pandemic are facing another viral problem, a versatile, passionist online backlash, yes, that falsely, falsely accuses the World Health Organization of conspiring to take power from national governments. We know that's exactly what they're trying to do. They've been trying to force their influence on us for, for many years and really tried to influence Uh, the last administration and has made a very good, healthy push in influencing our current administration. But notice it says a pandemic treaty is not imminent. That's what they're saying. But they did say, though member states agreed in December that a new agreement is needed, it will take years of negotiations to reach a final draft. Their, Their target is 2024. So it's not off the table. They said themselves, hey, those are just conspiracy theories. We weren't really planning on doing that right now. Oh, it's in the works till later. See how they 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 deceive you? And that's what sorcery does. They just it's a a art of deception by using uh, substances to get to take your to influence you and to cause you to believe something that is not true. But what about the church? We noticed that instead of teaching that Jesus is the answer for many things, many of them send off, many of the leaders of these churches send them off to psychologists and psychiatrists for help. The system of psychology and psychiatry we know is based on Jung and also um, Freudian, Freud's teachings, which were all developed through their spiritualist influences that come from the demonic realm. If you really study these things, you see they are not, they are, they, Christians should not have anything to do with these teachings or these influencers, these developments. And so, and we know that most of these people, this whole med- mental health system push people onto drugs. They use the pharmaceutical industry to put them in, in, on these things that are mood altering and life altering drugs that are not good for you. But um, we know that even alcohol consumption has been okayed by many uh, leaders in the church today. Did you know that the word comes from the Arabic al kol and kol uh, actually means to darken the eyes, and it really was associated with evil spirits in the Arabic language. So all of this, really, when you think about the the idea of alcohol being part of the demonic or the spiritual realm. Um, it gives more full meaning to what Peter said. Peter said, therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. He's saying, do not be unwise and know what the will of the Lord is. What is the will of the Lord? 
the, we know what the will of the Lord is to, to live in holiness, separate from the world, completely unique from the world's system. And do not be drunk with wine. I hate to tell you, but that is a command. That isn't saying go ahead and 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 maybe if you you know if you're by yourself you can be drunk in wine as long as you do it in your own little place. No, it says do not be drunk with wine, and there's a play on words here, because drinking is only temporary. You drink, you get drunk, you you know it, it wears off, and then you got to go back and do it again, and that's your that that's where alcoholism comes in. You got to constantly do it to keep up the feeling, but with the spirit, it's constant. It's forever. It is all that you need. It will fulfill every longing in your heart. When Jesus talked to the woman at the well, she said, you know, you drink of this water, you're just going to thirst again, but the water that I give you, you will never thirst. And not speaking of physical water, but your sa the satisfaction that you need, that you're longing for, you will find only in him. And that's the truth. You know, many people are running after other things to be satisfied in the world today. And it's really the world system sorcery trying to deceive you to get you to um, get to the point where you have forsaken God and burned incense to other gods. You know, it, that's why I believe that it's important that we listen to what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 when he said, All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. To be brought under the power of something is to be put under its influence. And whenever you do a drug, whenever you do, whenever you drink, even if it's just one beer, you're being put under the influence of that which you're partaking in. And it clouds your judgment. It causes you to possibly be deceived like sorcerers will use as this world system is using the, the drugging of a culture that turns to itself for help instead of turning to Christ. The deception has begun. The world system has deceived the masses and it will be all used as a ploy, this grand deception for them all to turn to the Antichrist and think that he is their Messiah, that he is their hope and they will, they will agree to worship him and take a mark that will mean they will be damned forever. You know, it's all deception and sorcery. And we need to turn away from that. You and I have hope in Christ. You and I can put our faith and trust in him. And he will carry us through our deepest depressions, our darkest times, our, our biggest trials. He has told us that he will carry us through those things. And if you don't know Christ today, if you've been putting your faith and trust in drugs and alcohol and all of those things, you, you need to know that there is a better way. And that is by turning from them, putting your faith and trust in Christ, calling out to him, asking him to forgive you of the sin of the addiction that you've been involved in, but trusting in him and believing in him because he will come into you and deliver you from that lifestyle. He did it for me. He can do it for you. So that's all that we have today. And if you would like to join us this Sunday as we continue our journey through Revelation chapter 18 uh, at Calvary Solid Ground, we're in Orangevale. We have a 12.30 p.m. service on Pacific Standard Time. You are more than welcome to go to our website or to our app and you can catch the archives. But for the rest of you, I just want to say thank you for watching this. And uh, please continue to keep your eyes up because our redemption draws near and our hope is only found in Christ. So with that said, I'm going to end as I started. Maranatha.